It's vandalism. Vandal's confession can be seen signed across the city. Many ask why vandals do what they do. Excited about being able to see the markings that they put up and know that it annoys people. Besides graffiti, I do skulls or I do roses, any lines or whatever you could connect with anything else. The sketchiest place that I've painted was a billboard. I'm from Vegas. If there's a gang in that neighborhood, you have to be with them to paint in that neighborhood or go somewhere else. I was arrested by an undercover minivan. Me and my other friend were walking down the street tagging some uh, power boxes and the minivan saw us and he arrested us. And I actually did juvenile jail time. What makes me motivated is other artists being better than me. I just want to be better than them, you know what I'm saying? You know, taking your time, making it look nice, people will see that that art, you know, your talent. I wouldn't risk getting caught by the police anymore. I'd rather do it illegal. In ninth grade, I moved schools and I had like no friends, so express myself in a different way and like get myself out there and do something. My favorite style, flary style, like soulfuls, a center block wall. The paint soaks into the wall and you get no drips. It's just like super buttery. A stop sign, electrical box, it's nice and smooth. Tagging is cool and like getting up and putting your name everywhere. And it wasn't just for everyone else, it was just like for me, like I'd be riding my bike to work and I would see my tag on the fence or this electrical box and I'd just be like, yes, that's so cool. Ha, there I am again. Kind of like getting back at like the government or like the system, like ha ha, screw you. That's like straight vandalism when you're like painting on like someone's personal property, but it's like all fair game if you're like hitting a dumpster or city property. When everyone starts, you're a toy. Uh, I remember once you and me started hanging out, you and me just did that all the time together. We'd just be like, oh, look at this toy shit. And we'd just look and And we were just super shitty yeah, ourselves. I know. Practicing every day, especially in the last two and a half years, just having all this time in the world, progressing to doing a style that I like. Mostly just like respect the other people's work. But at the same time, if you're a toy and you go and like throw a really crappy piece down and you're better, just go cap them and put a nice piece over it. There's like beef between people across one that I didn't like and right over him. There's someone cross me on top. All those fools just try to cap all of his shit. I was with one of my friends and we're on this wall which runs along the green belt. I just finished doing this graffiti piece. All of a sudden, I look up and there's a bicycle cop. He could smell the paint fumes were rolling up over the wall and he's like, Hey, stop right there. And I just yell at my friend, come on, dude. And we run through all the bushes by the tree of life, like under the railroad bridge. And the bike cop is on the green belt following us. My buddy ran in front of me and I kept yelling at him, jump in the river. It's a move of like, hide behind like a post while the cop goes by one way and you like scurry around the other side and like hide from him. Freaking ran the opposite way, jumping on my moped and just driving off and just being so scared. Yeah, I got away. Got caught. I read the pre-sentence investigation. It said my name and he looked at him and was like, yeah, I know who that is. He didn't tell directly, but he told. You would like call it dry snitching. I was already on felony probation for a delivery of marijuana. I went to my probation officer's meeting. They arrested me there. They charged me with six, Felony malicious injury to property, $217,000 in damage. Statute in Idaho says graffiti is a misdemeanor. It doesn't matter the property damage value. Most people get charged with a felony even though they could fight it and get it dropped. The restitution was still a bunch, $20,000. Boise Police Department has a property crimes like task force. They just go around and take a bunch of pictures of all the graffiti and then they mark it with a red X. If someone's in that system and they catch them today, they'll be able to go back through 10 years of records and see exactly what type of damage they've done to the city. When they came to my house after I got arrested, they took all my sketchbooks. They tried to put more graffiti on me that I didn't do. Every graffiti artist can draw this certain kind of star, and he thought that that was me, even though it wasn't me. Even though getting arrested for graffiti, I still like the art. I'm not out there tagging walls now, but right now it's okay. Police say they were able to catch one of the city's most prolific vandals. Over a hundred different taggings that have been found from Boise all the way to Portland, Oregon. I grew up in jail as an institution. My uncle is a tattoo artist. He had just like binders and binders of his artwork. We were just kind of in awe by it because he was the only artist who we knew. His mom and dad didn't even want him doing that. It was kind of taboo because my grandma, she comes from Mexico. My grandfather came from Texas and they had pretty formal household. Conservative, and that's who I was living with as a kid. Uh, my dad was in and out of prison. My mom wasn't around. I think the more she didn't want us to see that stuff, the more we wanted to know what, what is it about. She was stressed to me to be a doctor, lawyer, dentist. In my heart, I knew I was never gonna be those things. I'm a creative soul. I had a lot of gang things. I had a lot of weed things. Every time I collect a book full of tags, 
she'd rip them up. A lone kid. Riding just kind of made sense. It's just something that you look forward to when you're living your everyday life. I used to just love making them unreadable, connecting them in crazy ways. I put so much passion into it. I put so much energy in I could only hope that somebody who's on the ropes or don't really know what he wants to do and it, you know, is trying to figure it out, is able to see something that I'm doing and he be as took into it as I was. And if that could connect him to who he is, then I'm winning. Nighttime right off the freeway, you know, busting off a throwy and filling that fucker in. And just the thrill of all this traffic going by me. I like working with the homie and just having that fluidity, doing my skeleton. He's right behind me filling it in. I'm right behind him doing a 3D. He's right behind me doing the, the outline of the outline. There's a humongous wall on Park Center. Traffic's going by and I wrote my name like 20 one time. And there was so much adrenaline going through me, like I almost was sober after I was done. Traffic's going by and um, we're at a bridge or a little freeway wall and we're just rocking a spot. In the open, but at the same time, like you can't see me. It's just like poetry, emotion, some beautiful raw energy that's just connecting me with the street. It just makes me feel alive. I wish everybody could get a glimpse of that. And that's why I think a documentary like this is important because there's a story behind all of this. You know, like I ain't just there scribbling shit. Like, that's a piece of my soul my skin that I'm putting on that wall be in a gallery or I don't want to do that do it because it's illegal for that rebellion the risk if it was easy then everyone's gonna be doing it I'm gonna rack all my paint I'm gonna paint every spot I'm gonna go at it harder than you're gonna go at it a scribe as big as my hand is, is gonna cost somebody $320 to get caught it's just putting salt on the wound he was caught uh, stealing 27 cans of spray paint his wallet that had some specific drawings as soon as I saw those I went See beyond the fucking legal aspect of it. I know it's hard for your everyday person to do that. Keep doing art. That's a message that we're spreading because that's where passion is. And it doesn't have to be writing on walls. You can kick me, but I ain't going down. Neither is the movement. I am a sociopath when I paint on things that don't belong to me. Following the art scene and growing up around artists, I was already kind of a delinquent and getting into trouble into school, so it just seemed kind of like the right path at the time. Not really have much, but to be able to produce something and then look back at it and be like, I made that. My favorite style would definitely have to be more of a wild style because it becomes more non-representational and it loses direct meaning from our society and these societal implications and it becomes more of like a spiritual element that people see from different perspectives. There's a subculture that exists of graffiti artists that's generally pretty small, kind of just a free for all. I could paint over your stuff, you could paint over my stuff, like a rank and just comparisons of who's good. A hand style would get covered by a throw up, would get covered by a piece, would get covered by a burner. A burner would only get covered unless you're an asshole. The sketchiest, place I painted was definitely a rooftop spot on like a half foot ledge. Probably could have fallen like a good six stories. That'd be considered a heaven spot. And I was at a water tower in the desert. I got called in by a hiker. When I finished my piece, I was leaving. Before I knew it, I was getting tackled to the ground by a cop. When I was about 14 years old, while I was at school, they went in with a full team of cops, drug dogs, destroyed my room, pretty much took every single one of my belongings that they could take. Were not very nice to my family at all. I spent a lot of time in jail, almost two years. Even after I was released, I still have 1,757 days over my head. Another aspect of graffiti art is going places that other people normally wouldn't go, seeing things that normally people wouldn't see. Part of painting in abandoned places is reclaiming these places and creating art out of them instead of just forgetting them and letting them decay into nothing. I like to explore and I like to wander to find new things and people having their eyes wide open but still not seeing these things. Keep their eyes straight on the road, do what they're told and no one really kind of thinks about, oh, what's behind that fence? Oh, what's over this canyon? Where can we go? What can we do? What, how can we push ourselves to go find these things and these unique experiences and places? You know, in a lot of ways it saved my life and in a lot of ways it destroyed my life. You're not gaining anything from it. Small credit from other graffiti writers, maybe some civilian on the street. But for the most part, it's detrimental to your health. It's the fact that you could go to jail you could owe the city a lot of money and that you're destroying some people's property it can be very selfish sometimes because you only think about what you're going to gain, what you're going to paint, how it's going to look when it's done. You're not thinking about the people that it affects. You're not thinking about your family that affects when you, when you go to jail. In our society, there are a lot of things that have been kind of generalized into a good category, such as advertisements, billboards, all these things that we see on TV every day that we're flooded with. We didn't ask to see these things. They were paid for by corporations to put there for us to see so that way they can sell us a product. Say graffiti is kind of the opposite of that. People that wouldn't necessarily have a voice 
or they don't have an art degree or don't have the money to go into a gallery. It gives them the freedom to express themselves and to show what they're thinking. And whether it be good or bad, a lot of change has come because of things that have been written in the street and people will see that and it creates thoughts and those thoughts create actions impacts with politics and other types of social issues we have in our society today. One of the most important things about creating art is creating it for yourself, not necessarily what society defines as beautiful.